Hello and welcome. This time we don't want to talk about time. This time we talk about time. <laughs> Already. We talk about, and it's not ancient, but it's no longer used, I would say. Yeah? We talk about analog time elements. Yeah? Talk about analog time elements. Uh, why I'm telling you this? Because there are some things inside which needs to be mentioned if you're working with logic elements. Okay. Yeah, let's get directly to the point. Huh? Show you something. Let's say we do have an input, an input of a digital element. Okay. There's the time. Okay. This digital element, the producers of those digital elements, they say they give us guaranteed values. Yeah? So there is the voltage level, yeah? there is the time. They say if the voltage level is in an area around zero with a certain maximum, they guarantee that their logic circuit is interpreting this as zero. So this is logic, logically zero, this area. And there is exactly such area at the top, uh, at the high level. Uh, so there is somewhere the high level. And there is a certain area where it is guaranteed by the manufacturer of the chip. If the voltage level is inside this area, we are fine. Yeah, is guaranteed to be logic one. In between, here, in this area, yeah, it is not guaranteed. Okay? It's not guaranteed at all. Yeah? What is happening? This area here is the so-called forbidden area. producer says this area is not allowed from our voltage level. Yeah? This is forbidden. Forbidden. This looks good. Why? Because they cannot guarantee what is happening there. Of course I'm not destroying anything. Yeah? I do not harm the element. But the logic is what is not guaranteed. Okay? Because every element has somewhere a certain level. Where will it switch? Where it will switch from 0 to 1. If the voltage is increasing, this is a sharp edge by the way. Yeah? If the voltage is increasing above this level, it will be interpreted as 1. And there's a certain level where the voltage is switching back from 1 to 0, usually below. So if the voltage is dropping below this dotted blue line here, then we switch back to logic 0. If we do have things like that, sharp edges. We're switching exactly at this point in time from 0 to 1. Yeah? Now we want to delay things. Okay? And you could come to the idea, hey, I'm just using I'm just using a capacitor. Yeah? And with the help of a resistor. Yeah? And here I have the input of my logic circuit. Here is my, here is my logic element here. It's an AND or an OR or whatever, the input. Here we do have this sharp edge here. So this is the input voltage. And here we have a delay voltage. 
and this delay voltage will then increase slowly. Okay, it's like PT1 element. Yeah, it delayed simply. It needs to fill the capacitor here. Here's the R. It needs to fill the capacitor with charge and the capacitor voltage is increasing with the increasing charge. Okay. There is a time constant R multiplied by C. Okay. How many ohms, how many farads multiply this, you get the time constant. Here, if I draw here the time constant T tau the charge of this capacitor yeah, would look like exactly after the time constant we are at around 63% charge yeah. 1, 3 after 3 we are pretty much here and after 5 we are at the top yeah. and the steepness at the beginning will be exactly this tangent here so we will end up in a voltage like this so this is this delayed voltage and here you can see now we do have a delay time like this This is now the delay time. Suddenly, we are not here at 1, we are here at 1, after a certain time. Yeah? Actually, this is what we wanted. Mm -hmm. So this is really working. And it worked. Yeah? They built this. However, there are some downsides. There are pretty much some downsides, because the manufacturer cannot guarantee where these levels are. Yeah? This is actually what a digital chips makes it cheaper, simply, because we have a wide area where we do not allow. We say, okay, we guarantee the top, we guarantee the lower part, and then my manufacturing can be smaller or not that accurate and so on. It makes cheaper the manufacturing. Yeah? An analog chip is much more expensive, yeah? where you, these things are really exact and so on. Yeah? And it's, there is much more... Uh, for Schles, uh, for Schles, uh, there's much more rubbish yeah, in producing and so on. Digital chips they are much cheaper. However, since these levels are not guaranteed, they might be on a different chip. Yeah, on a different chip, they might be here, let's say. Yeah? So this is... This is from 0 to 1. Yeah. And suddenly we have a totally different delay time, yeah. just because I'm using a different chip. Yeah. This is not good, yeah. especially because these things also need space. Yeah. They also need space, so we could think about using things like this. One, one, and here we have uh, Y, and this is Y, uh, this is X here, my input. This does not mean both Y's are equal. Because one can be have a delay, so one delay, and the other one has an other delay. Yeah? This is not this is not good practice. Yeah? So this is not working. I really have to to somehow fit those things together. Yeah, or maybe I can do it like this. Yeah? Yeah? Then okay, yeah? they are the same. Yeah? So it's not that easy. Yeah. It's really not that easy, and this is why 
those uh, those things are well almost gone I would say yeah those analog time things okay? because it's also if you have had if you have higher rates yeah and changing uh, then this is not starting at zero it's starting somewhere and there are things inside nowadays we do it different with digital with counters and so on we do it digital uh, it's easier we will see we'll talk about this why I'm telling you this is to let you know there are areas and this switching borders huh? I think this is important that you know okay? otherwise yeah, these analog time elements they do not have that importance that they used to have huh? yeah. next time we're talking about memory. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.